Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to end the videos of the paid request. It's time for Robert Korea. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And when we talk about a film called Go Gorilla Go, also known as The Hired Gun, which I think is a better title, came out in 1975. It's another European film. I guess the reason it was called Go Gorilla Go is, I guess, overseas, a bodyguard means gorilla. Like this bodyguard, people keep calling him, oh, look at that gorilla walking. I mean, I don't know if that's a thing in Europe. That's I don't think that's really a thing in the U.S. But it's about some guy played by Fabio Testi. Fabio. You see that this property developer guy is about ready to get kidnapped and he gets saved by this guy. But I guess you find out that it was part of a steam... I was a bit confused by this, so... Was the steam from the get the job, I guess? I guess the steam to, to get the job as a bodyguard? And then throughout the film, I see he's a bodyguard for this developer. And the guy keeps getting blackmailed. He just threatening messages. Hey, you saw that the lights flickered. Who knows what could happen? Uh, later on, a boiler is blown up. We don't see it, but we hear it blow up. Or they get shot at through the window. I did not like this film at all. I did not. I thought this was a really boring movie. I did not mind the previous one he requested, Almost Human. Because the, the lead antagonist, he, at least he was an interesting character to follow, his buddy eyes, his sweaty, nervous, psychopathic persona. Like I said, was I see Henry Silva, who's usually a bad guy in films like Above the Law and, and stuff, to play a good guy. I wish he had more to do. But... The reason I'm pausing is, it feels like not a lot happens until the finale, which is on a train. And that's why I pause, because I'm trying to think of all the stuff that happens in this. And there's a couple little eccentric things. I mean, maybe this is normal back in the day, but I guess there's a gun range and there's a jackpot machine. And when someone puts in the jackpot machine, they get a bunch of bullets. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That may be a typical thing. If so, then okay, it's it's not that crazy. But I'm like, oh dear. Uh, Fabio Testi, I guess he was a stuntman before he was an actor. And he has a good look to him. Acting-wise, it's hard to determine because it's all dubbed and stuff. So he didn't blow me away or anything. And it's kind of just either him having a conversation with his brother, wants to get involved, him trying to tell this property developer to, to calm down. At one point there's a car chase, which leads to the lead idea of beating up. The music, not all, but a lot of times, sound like a 70s porno music. I thought it was very sluggish and very boring with a lot of talk. And wasn't, in my opinion opinion interesting conversations please do the elvis way a little less talk a little more action that would that would have helped a lot especially in the middle section So it leads into the boss getting kidnapped. Spoiler alert. You find out this is a plan from the good guy. He kidnapped his boss on purpose to get him out of the way. To try to see who is the leak. Who is the person who is a two-face. Who has worked it against them. Finds out. Creates a setup to get the bad guys. The black bailers who take it too far. The lead guy's brother wants to help. He just beaten up a bit, but he's able to lead them into the trap. There's two scenes actually in this movie that I thought were worthwhile to watch. There's a scene in an elevator 
where our lead dies in it and someone takes some kind of pipe or something and crowbars the bottom half like the bottom floor of the elevator so you see the guy hanging and there's some nice shots where you see above him and you see how far down it is and he's like desperately trying to hold on to the sides and like the guy bad guys are putting the elevator up and down up and down to shake him off and he's hanging on that's not a bad scene for a lower budget 70s movie so I mean they didn't have all the techniques that you could do that scene today but I thought okay that was an interesting Grant I'm sitting there going uh, if he's trapped in an elevator now can you just get a gun and shoot him <laughs> but hey they want to be a bit more inventive I did appreciate that and the the train bit of business where the bad guys get on a train and then the good guy is riding with someone in a car and he's shooting at some of the bad guys he jumps onto the train and the bad guys are just shooting some of the passengers they even look out the window they're shooting just random pedestrians like damn made sense these bad guys don't give a fuck and a cool shot where the good guy shoots and it shoots the main bad guy through the eye who's got this uh scope and shoots right through the scope into the guy's eye that was cool I, I did like that so I don't mind the ending I just wish the first two thirds of the film were th that much more exciting because I didn't think it was like from the elevator onward I, I didn't mind the movie as it was but up until then it was kind of him just wandering around there should have been a lot more scuffles as him as a bodyguard. I think what they could have done is, okay, he's a bodyguard now. Maybe random people. Maybe there's, like... Think of a Dirty Harry film, Clint Eastwood, right? You have the main story, but then you have Clint Eastwood doing his job as a cop, and there's all these other separate incidents that happens and occurs on the job, as well as having this background story. So Clint Eastwood's doing his job, this background story developing, so he's looking at this case, but these random crimes, robberies, things of that nature happening. I think you could have had him, okay, you're a bodyguard, but then other people may maybe want to use him as bodyguard, he's got to switch up, or he got a bodyguard more than one person, and there's scuffles here, so you see him fisticuffs here, you see him just a badass taking names I, I wish we could have seen more of that we, you don't really see much of that especially in the first two thirds of the film and I think that made it like I said sluggish and rather boring so I think they, they had a missed opportunity here with all that at least to me I think there's a lot more they could have done with that aspect there's, especially for a guy that if he is a former stuntman Again, there's a lot more situations you could put him in as a stuntman. More, maybe... Maybe a car chase where he's got to hop from one car to the other. Or a car chase where he's hanging off the side. They're shooting back and forth. Or uh, a bar fight. Maybe add like a bar fight in there. Maybe he's got to follow the developer. Maybe there's other random people. Like, he doesn't know who it is. He doesn't know who's blackmailing him to this extent. But there's other people that are mad about the development, and they'll fight this person, they'll fight this person, is this the person blackmailing me, is this the person blackmailing me, there's a bunch of suspects, and they all f try to fight him or try to do stuff, but they're more, they're not that much of a danger. Bodyguard takes them out easily, or decently easily, or so, at least some form of excitement. Uh, there's a bit where the property developer's daughter gets in, and then he's supposed to be watching her. I don't think that really led anywhere. Let's try to be a bit lovey-dovey. I didn't really feel the chemistry. It felt like it was just added in there after the fact. Like, we gotta have something, so have a little bit of a love story or whatever. But I didn't really feel much chemistry. And then by the end, like, he succeeds and he quits, but then the daughter goes with him. And I'm like, okay, really? Sure. So, 
Maybe if you're a big, big fan of Fabio Testi and you need to see everything this guy has done, which I had never heard of this guy before. But, yeah. Other than the elevator and the train bit, I thought this was a slog to sit through. And I didn't really see much style. I didn't see much substance. That's just me, though. But hey, like any review, always check it out for yourself because you never know. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.